Hello everyone, my name is Adam Skodi and today I'm going to show you how to use a grayscale shader with Godot Engine. But not only am I going to show you how to use it, I'm going to show you how to turn it on and off from within Godot code, as well as controlling the brightness of the shader. So let's start by creating our project. And inside our project I asked it to download and insert a resource folder that contains a simple image. This image will be used to show you the effect of the shader, otherwise there won't be anything to turn into black and white. Now if you have a game, or any other project from where you have something, you can just insert the shader over it and ignore this one. Now the white PNG is a 1x1 one one pixel image, will be used to fill the screen, and wherever this is on top, it will turn the background into black and white. Let's go into our project here, let's open it up. Well, let's create our node here. I'm gonna create a control node. I'm gonna slowly rename this by slowly double clicking it, renaming it main. I'm going to make sure it fills the entire screen by changing the anchor points to end on both right and bottom. I'm going to scroll down into margin, selecting the right and typing in zero on both the right and bottom. So now you can see it fills the entire screen here. Let's press control S to save the scene. I'm gonna name this main TSCN, which is recommended. I'm gonna press save. I'm going to hit the play button and select our main scene because it's not been defined yet. So I'm going to select our main so this runs every time I hit the play button. Okay, let's start by adding our background image. I'm just going to use a sprite. And on that sprite, I'm going to insert our thumbnail image from our last shader video, which was all about creating a Game Boy shader. So I'm going into my rest folder, selecting our Game Boy shader thumbnail. I'm going to move it so it fills the screen here. So, let's start by creating our shader. I'm gonna use a texture frame. This texture frame will be used to fill the entire screen. Let's rename this to grayscale shader. And load our texture, which was a one by one white image. I'm gonna select expand to on, and I'm going to select right, end, bottom, end under anchor. As well as selecting the margin and putting it to zero here. There we go, perfect, that's what we want. But we're not done yet. Because we don't want a white image on top of our game here, we want a shader. And that is done by creating a new material. Select new canvas item material, and then we edit it. And then under here, we can find shader and shader, where it says null. We're gonna create a new canvas item shader. And again, select edit. From here, we're gonna create our shader code. Now the fragment shader runs on each and every pixel, so basically what we want to do is get the pixel color for our background, not the white image, but for our background here. So whatever is behind our grayscale shader, we're gonna get that current color of the pixel, and we're gonna convert it into a grayscale. Let's start by creating our shader code. Now, we want to be able to toggle our shader code, so we're gonna start by creating a uniform. Uniform allows us to change the variable from within our Godot editor, which I will demonstrate at the end of our script here. So uniform, we're gonna create a boolean called grayscale. And by default, I'm gonna set it to true. So, not tur. There we go. Okay, what else do we need? Well, we also need the brightness of our grayscale. So let's create another uniform. I'm going to type in a uniform float brightness equals to 0.5. So it will be kind of, it will be in the middle of completely dark and completely bright here. Okay, so now we have our variables which we will use to sh change shader properties. Now these variables will be used to manipulate our pixel color which we will get by typing in color pixel color which is the name of our variable and from there we're gonna get our texture screen pixel color which is used by using a text screen and inside text screen we're gonna enter the UV coordinates or U screen UV and lastly, we're gonna add a 1. This returns a vector tree, red, green, and blue value. And in order to use a color type, we will need to add a, another alpha value inside a vector 4 here. Okay, let's not forget semicolon. And if gray scale is true, we are going to set our screen color, which is used by entering color with big capital letters and red, green, and blue. So we are now going to change the red, green, and blue value of our color here. And that's done by setting it equal to a vector tree. And we need to do that in order 
to get the dot product of vector tree of the pixel color, the current screen color, and our brightness. And using a dot product between pixel color and brightness will turn it into a grayscale color. So let's first use pixel color dot red, green, and blue. That turns this into a vector tree. If you were to write red and green, you get a vector 2, and so on. And this will return only a float by only getting the red value. So let's get our vector 3 by writing red, green, and blue, comma. This will be a dot product of another vector, 3, which will be our brightness. And brightness. There we go. Let's not forget semicolon again. So if everything is correct, it should turn into a black and white image here. Great scale, as you can see. But we're not done yet. What if it's not grayscale? What if this is false? Well, now it's gonna go wrong. Nothing can happen. It's all wrong. So let's turn it to true again, and let's create an else here. So if grayscale is not on, we're simply going to set the color to equal to what it is. Right there. In fact, I shouldn't do that. I should use dot red, green, and blue, because if your background has some alpha values, it wouldn't catch it. So it should be like this. So let's turn it to false here, make sure it works. Yeah, perfect. Now I want to show you how to manipulate uniform here from the editor here. So I can select our texture frame. I'm going to go down into material, select that, edit, and from here you can see our shader parameters. Grayscale is currently on, so if I were to untick this, it would disappear. I'm going to check it on again, and now we're going to change the brightness so we can see the effect of that. Let's try point 0.2 here, and that's dark. Let's try point 0.1, that's even darker. Let's try point 0.9, that should be bright, right? Oh boy, that's bright. Yeah. Uh, that allows you to change it depending on the brightness of your game, so make it nice. <laughs> so how do we change this from code? The shady parameters. Let's start by creating a new script. On main. I'm gonna rename, I'm gonna name this main GD as recommended. I'm gonna remove all the unnecessary commenting. And let's start by just getting our reference to our grayscale shader. So let's just use a var shader is equal to get node grayscale shader. This will return the texture frame node, but I don't want the texture frame node. I want the material of the texture frame. So I'm going to write dot get material, which now gives us the shader material, the material that contains the shader. So how do we manipulate this? Now we know now if we were to play this, it will become a black and white image. So let's change this from code without changing anything on the shader here. So let's set shader material dot set shader param. And now we should come with suggestions, which are the parameters you have inside the shaders. So if you want to change your brightness or grayscale, we can do that. Let me select grayscale. And on a second parameter, we will get the error value of our grayscale. Let's set it to false. So if everything is correct, this should now turn off when you play it. And there you have it. That's how you change it. We can also use another function. And that is get shader parameter. And you can get the value, the current value. So if I were to print this now, let's print a string of our parameter here. We will get false because we set it to false before playing this. So let's try it. And there you have it. If you have any further questions regarding this shading material or shading in general, please let me know. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. And I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.